As a paper crafter, something I'm often doing is trying to find ways to use what I already have at home with my existing tools, materials and mediums to get amazing results. And I found that something I have oodles of is just your general photo paper that you put through your printer to print off your photos. This paper is absolutely amazing. It reacts in a different way to any other paper that I've tried with all of my inks and sprays, my alcohol pens, and it gives me amazing results. I mean, look at these, they are beautiful. So I'm going to be showing you a few of my tried and tested techniques that you can be using to create absolutely stunning back backgrounds for your projects. Now the photo paper I'm using is from the brand Canon um, but any photo paper will work. I have tried it with even the inexpensive photo paper that you can buy from the supermarket. I love this one because this is from their photo cube and it comes in small squares which is perfect for my cards that I like to do, usually square ones, um, but you can buy up to A4 or letter size sheets that will go through your printer instead. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a resist and this is really easy because you don't have to worry about clear embossing or buying any special resist spray or anything like that. We're going to use a stencil to clearly show the image so I'm just going to press this down onto my cards there and I'm going to take a clear embossing ink. So you're not going to see where I'm putting the ink but I'm just going to be spreading it all over. So I'm just smearing the ink pad over the stencil, pressing down hard enough so that the ink is going through onto the paper, ensuring that the paper is held still at all times. And to be honest, the photo paper, this is a glossy one. You can get other surfaces as well, so you can get almost matte ones too. But the glossy one in particular will almost hold on to your stencil anyway, it kind of tacky and just uh, it sticks to it a little bit which is perfect for making sure it doesn't move. So when you're sure you've got lots and lots of clear ink and again the ink brand doesn't matter, this one is a Sizzix one, I've tried it with Versamark, I've tried it with uh, Wow Embossing Ink as well, it all works perfectly. Now I'm going to gently lift off my stencil, pop that to the side, now you may find um, and you probably won't see that on here, that you get ever such a slight, almost yellowing effect where the ink has been. That's a good thing, that means you've got the ink on there and it's staying on there. Now as you can see, I did have a little bit of colour on the back of my stencil. Um, that's just from previous projects where I obviously haven't cleaned it, so it's just on there. But that's fine because where that's gone is where I'm going to be applying my ink anyway. I'm going to use a heat tool to dry this off. Just be careful because the photo paper will warp quite easily with the heat. You can usually quite easily straighten it out though when it cools down. So although heat setting it isn't essential, you do want the ink to be dry, so the paper to have soaked it in. And as this is photo paper, any ink going on there will dry very, very quickly. Now to add some colour and see that resist. I'm going to be using Distress inks for this. A little bit later in this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you apply Distress Oxides to the photo paper as well. So stay tuned for that because that is a completely different effect. So just onto a piece of acetate, I've smooched some of my pink, this is picked raspberry Distress ink, spraying a bit of water and I'm going to splodge this on. Now the thing to know with photo paper, Whatever colour you put on first is usually the colour that will show later on. So uh, you're not going to be mixing your colours, you're not going to be able to easily overlay colours unless you've got a particularly dark colour there. So as you can see my pink going on, you can already see that resist happening. Now I've not fully covered that in pink, I want to go in with another colour this time, this is Spiced Marmalade, so I've got a bit of an orange going on, so maybe a bit of a Peach Melba type colourway going on here. I'm going to put the orange in the areas that I haven't already gone to. I don't really want to leave anywhere white because we've got the resist for that. And look at that, isn't that absolutely beautiful? You can use a piece of kitchen towel just to blot off the excess because the colour will take very quickly to the photo paper. So you don't need to worry about wiping it off. You're just taking any excess off that won't likely end up soaking in very well anyway. So there we've got a brilliant resist. How beautiful is that? 
Now if you're not keen on the glossiness of the photo paper and you don't have matte paper at home, you can over the top of your design once it's fully dried add something like the Distress Collage Medium in matte. This is going to dull down that shine. I put it on with a brush to ensure that I get the uh, matte medium everywhere and I'll do that on half of this piece and then show you the difference when that has, has dried. It will still look glossy whilst it's wet. So there we go, this half has the matte medium on and this part has none on so you can clearly see if I hit the light there you've got much more gloss on this side and much less on this side. Okay with photo paper you can also use your alcohol pens, almost treat it a little bit like uh, Upo paper which is actually very expensive. This does dry a little quicker so you do need to be super fast. So I'm going to use two um, alcohol pens here, these are from the Creative Craft Products brand but any alcohol based marker will work. I'm going to use the uh, broad nibs here to apply my colour really quickly and I'm just going to throw it down and then I'm going to be using alcohol blending solution all over the top to mix the two together. This is going to give you a beautiful alcohol ink um, design or finish that means you don't have to go and purchase alcohol ink specifically. If you've got a set of pens you can get the same effect. So quickly scribble some pink there and then some blue on here. Of course, I know that the blue and the pink together are going to make purple and that's I'm fine with that. So do think about the colors that these are going to make together. And I'm going to pour alcohol blending solution all over the two. Now this will take a few minutes to work. So what I do is just give it time to start working, but allow the alcohol blending solution to be moving over the surface of the ink at the moment. Just keep moving it so that it's not drying at all. You will get the outer lines a little bit but just give that time to work. Then I like to dry this off. This creates some more texture in there. It does blow the edges around. I tend to blow them into the middle with the heat gun just to make sure it doesn't spread any further and we get some beautiful, beautiful results from this. Now, as you can see, that's mixed quite a lot. It's almost a solid, almost a purple color. I'm going to go in again with another layer of pink on here. because I want that pink to stand out a little bit more. And again, a few drips of the alcohol blending solution. Now, this is really cool because what it's also going to do is kind of almost reactivate the ink that's underneath. So I'm just going to allow that to move around there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put some splodges of ink in other areas as well. And look at that reacting straight away. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to give that, let that move around a little, but not too much because I'm quite happy with how everything is. And then give that a dry too. Lastly, I'm just going to put a couple of drops in the middle of that pink just to allow that to do what it's going to do. There was a lot of alcohol ink there already or alcohol blending solution there already, sorry. Um, so that didn't get those specific little circles that we've got around the edge here. So I've just added a few more there and look, that colour's brightening up even more. Now that looks absolutely gorgeous on white photo paper. It's stunning, that's already a card background. But what if you wanted to turn it into something like this on a darker background? Well, that's really easy. I'm going to take a Distress Spray Stain. Now, as I said to you earlier, once you put ink down onto photo paper, the first ink that goes down is usually the one that takes the most and it won't really allow any other ink to then absorb. So we can spritz this around the edge here and we're still going to pretty much keep that beautiful shape there and just darken around the edges. You may get a few little splatters in the middle over the um, al I say alcohol ink, but uh, alcohol pens and the blending solution, but not too many. So let's see how this goes. And I always tend to do this with a darker spray stain rather than um, a distress oxide spray. And again, in the next technique, I'm going to show you why we're using inks and not oxides. So just spritzing around the edge. 
giving that a moment or two to settle in and then I'm going to take some kitchen towel and I'm going to lift off the excess. Also a tip for you, the patterns that are left by kitchen towel sometimes are really cool so bear that in mind. But as you can probably see here around the edge we've captured the blue but the alcohol ink is remaining. I'm going to give this a nice good buff to just remove any residue ink that's on the surface there. Isn't that just gorgeous? Look at that stunning. So now we've got that alcohol ink on a darker background. Now I keep talking about it but why am I using inks and not my Distress Oxides? Well I'm now going to use my Distress Oxides. Let's choose um, yellow, red and the burgundy colours and I'm going to show you the effect that we get. So first of all I'm going to smooch onto the photo paper in the same way as I did a little bit earlier just by wetting one colour at a time and pressing it in. Just cleaning up from the last colour there, a bit of ink that's left on there. Let's start with the yellow. I'm always going to start with the lightest colour. I'm going to spritz this with some water, a good amount of water because I want some movement in here. And I'm going to press this into my photo paper in a few different areas, like so. I'm happy with that. Now, if you know anything about oxides, if you've ever used oxides before, Distress Oxides are a, a technically a hybrid ink. They are a mix between a dye and a pigment. The dye is going to soak into the photo paper in the same way as when we used the dye inks. But the pigment, and that with oxides is what looks cloudy and chalky, will sit on top. Okay, so we are going to get this as it dries, slightly more pastel and chalky look. So let's then go in with our next colour. This is Candied Apple. Again, I am going to water it down a touch. And I'm going to press this in. And to be honest, I'm actually going to probably end up getting this um, in most of the areas. There's a few white areas left over for my third colour. I'm not going to overwork this. Just let it be natural and organic and see where the colours smooch and where they go to. And lastly, I'm going to do the same with aged mahogany. So here I'm just really filling in the gaps where there's any white left. I don't need to worry about overriding colours because as I say the photo paper will have picked up on some colours here already and will be holding on to those. Now I need to let that dry. I can heat set this or I can allow it to air dry whichever is your preference but as I said earlier if you are going to heat set just be aware of the warping of the paper. So there, although the uh, glossiness of the photo paper is showing through, the colours are quite pastel. So what I'm going to do now is take a clean piece of kitchen towel. You can use a wet wipe if you prefer. And I'm just going to spritz half of this paper and I'm going to give that a wipe. And immediately you can see that colour pop. Look at the difference. So that's the dye part of the inks that settled into the paper, we've wiped away the pigment. So there's the cloudy pastel and there's the bright vivid. This is why I don't worry with using oxides on my photo paper because I'm actually getting the same results as I would if I just stuck with the dye inks. Now using everything we've already learned about using photo paper with different inks, I'm now going to use a stamp to create a resist. Now this is subtle. I'm going to be using my Flourish Detail Stamp but it creates a beautiful effect. So I've got my Flourish Stamp already in my uh, stamping platform and I'm going to ink it with Distress Ink which is a pigment and a dye ink. It is a hybrid. Um, so we've got the dye in here, we've also got the pigment in here. I'm going to ink up part of the stamp with quite a lot of ink. Now this is a bit of a um, different one because I've already said that 
your lighter colours will can be overridden by darker colours. So this is going to make this very subtle. But also, because technically, although it's white and ink is soaking into the paper, it does create a little bit more of a resist. Now, yes, you can do this with your clear embossing ink as well if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to show you other alternatives in case you don't have the clear embossing ink. So the white ink is on my stamp. Rather than me putting this over, because I only want part of the stamp here, I'm going to press this down. I'll probably use a, a brayer just to get a nice even coverage all over the stamp there. Again, the photo paper kind of sticks in place, so I don't need to worry about it moving on the stamp. I'm just making sure I'm getting as much ink as possible off the stamp and onto the photo paper. Now, again, you can just see that. It's very uh, hard to see. And this time I'm going to dry it and then I'm not going to be applying my ink pads and doing that smooching technique. I'm going to be applying my spray stains instead. Now I've heated this and it's warped. So what I'm going to do is just turn it the other way as it cools. So I'm just moving it back and forth the other way. And as you can see, it almost flattens itself out. So now to add my spray stains. With this result, you're going to get the best effect if you use a darker colour rather than a lighter one. My lighter one is just for a little bit of variation. So I'm going to apply the darker one first, mostly around the area that I've done my stamping. So let's move everything out of the way because this does get a little bit messy with the spray. And I'm going to go directly onto the image there over the white. And on this side, I'm going to use the lighter colours giving that just a little while to soak in. Not too long, I just want the colour to attach, to adhere to the photo paper. And then I'm going to lift this off. Again, you can see that print from the kitchen towel, which is really beautiful. You do get messy fingers, so do wear gloves or keep some soapy water handy if that bothers you. But you can see there, if I just buff that off for you a little, you can see that subtle effect that we've got from the stamp in the background. As I said to you earlier, it is subtle, but it is still beautiful if you want a little bit of texture just in the background of your image. So hopefully that's given you lots of ideas to get playing with any photo paper that you may already have at home and start using them in your paper craft projects, whether that's art journals, junk journals, mixed media, cards or scrapbooks. If you enjoy videos like this, don't forget, of course, to subscribe to my channel just up here. And I think you're also really going to like this video just here. Take care, everybody, and have a lovely day.